Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Um, happy Sunday. I hope you guys all had a merry December and you're ready to start a new year. What's on the table today is a limited edition Beauty Heroes box. I particularly wanted to jump on today, even though I hadn't even really planned to film a video, um, because uh, the skincare nerd and junkie in me wanted to talk about the products, not because I want you to rush out and buy them, um, simply because they're interesting. What's on the table is a new facial product by the Indie Luxe Green Beauty brand, Iuna. It is a new product called the Facial. It comes in two different strengths low and high, we'll get into what that um, potentially means. Beauty Heroes is launching this product. If you were to purchase it, it's $79 for these two products that are 200 mLs, and if you're a Beauty Heroes member, you get 15% off. If you're unfamiliar, Ayuna is a European skincare brand based in Spain. It is headed up by two women, a master esthetician and a master cosmetic chemist. Their line focuses on simplicity and minimalism and um, I believe right now they only have five facial products in their line and this new toner will be the sixth. Their motto is less is more. Now I have never made it a secret on my channel that when Iuna first came out I was skeptical. Their products are pricey. Their skincare cream is 50 ml for $198 that is not something that most people can just run out and buy. Now, over the last two years through Beauty Heroes, I've gotten to try uh, four of the five products that they make, and I've really come to respect them for multiple reasons. One, I think they bring credibility to green beauty in the conventional market. Their products are very well formulated. They use um, high potent um, fancy expensive actives and um, they advocate a couple things in their line that I really find to be um, beneficial for skin. They, adver they advocate skin fasting, topical fasting where you take a break from facial products. They um, are extremely uh, scientific and they adv advocate uh, soap. I mean they were really the one that changed my opinion about what soap could do for your skin. I was so skeptical about that um, soap, but I've come to love it and I've now come to start making my own soap. Now, even though I, I kind of like to talk about them because they are making conventional style products in a green beauty way, do, do I think that makes them better than brands like May Lindstrom that are just mixing together oils and butters? No. What I like to point out is that they're, they're just offering something different. Now, about the price tag, do I think that you should run out and go into debt to buy these products or their products at full price? Um, no, of course not. But if you find that their um, approach where you all you do is wash your face with soap and then apply a cream works for you and you can fit that into your budget, then yeah, I think that they make great product. But you know I will always champion you using what's appropriate for your budget and lifestyle and um, just general overall situation. So before we get started, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room that in product, packaging, description, ingredients list, um, this bears a very similar resemblance to the Biologique Regerc uh, P50 toner. Now, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know, and you don't know anything about P50 toner, and you never heard of that brand before, I'm going to put a link below. Um, it tells you everything you ever wanted to know about P50 toner. It comes in various strengths. It's had an evolution. It's a cult status product. There are similarities in the ingredients list between this and that product. Um, there's similarities, like I said, in what it's designed to do. So let's go over the nuts and bolts. What essentially is this product? Ayuna is calling it a prebiotic refining concentrate. You could call it a resurfacing toner. You could call it a very watery serum. You could call it whatever you want. Essentially, it's supposed to improve the texture, tone, and overall quality of your skin. Now, why is it coming in two strengths, low and high? I have not confirmed this, but my suspicions are, and my pH testing show, and just my mind, you know, low, high, and how they recommend using this, is they recommend that you start with the low for 10 to 14 days and then move on to the high. They recommend that you use it twice a day. 
You could use the low in the morning and then the high in the evening. My suspicions are it has to do with acid content. This is a refining treatment, meaning it is exfoliating. When I pH tested these, the low fell somewhere around between a four and a half and a five. I'm just using strips. I'm not using a meter, so I don't have a completely accurate range. But if you look at the pictures side by side, you can tell there's an off, there's an obvious difference in the pH. The high toner being lower, um, meaning that it has a stronger acid content, meaning it has a stronger exfoliating quality to it. So, um, like I said, the low is probably falling somewhere around around a five. The high is falling somewhere around a 3.5 to a four to a 4.5. Like I said, with strips, you can't be as accurate as you can with a meter, but my meter is out of buffering solution, so I couldn't get us an exact number. Let's look at the texture. This one is super watery. It does not sting when you apply it. It does not sting when you leave it on. What we should acknowledge is that it has a strong odor of vinegar as well as the signature Iuna scent. If you don't like the smell of vinegar, you're probably not gonna like this if you're very sensitive. The vinegar smell doesn't bother me at all. I actually prefer the smell of vinegar over things that are like extremely floral that give me headaches, like natural things like that don't really bother me. If you don't like the Iuna signature scent, then you won't like this because you can smell that as well. The vinegar smell to me fades. Skincare junkies tend to look past scent if you're delivering epic results. So we'll say that too. Now the high is obviously thicker. So it's probably gonna be more potent, both in the pH and the texture of the product. Let's go into the ingredients list because that's really what we wanna know, right? That's really gonna tell us what the product does. I've listed it below. The first ingredient is very exotic. It's the chemical H2O. <laughs> That joke just never gets old to me. The second ingredient is vinegar. Now, interestingly enough, using vinegar on your face is kind of controversial. Some people believe in it, some people don't. Um, I've read some things where people with acne just swear by vinegar, um, doing great things for their skin. I've read some articles by dermatologists saying that you should never put vinegar on your skin because it's too harsh. We all do whatever we want, don't we? The third ingredient is something called glutamic acid. It's an alpha amino acid. I believe it's also what they use in their essence treatment. It's called a baby amino acid. It's present in the skin. And the best description I could find of what it does, Shishado said that it is characterized by promotion of barrier function recovery of the stratum corneum that protects skin moisture. The next ingredient is propanadiol. Could be a solvent, could be a viscosity controller. Next, they have glycerin, which is a humectant derived from oil. I happen to love glycerin and want it to be in almost all my products. Now, the true star here for exfoliation, I believe, is this thing called succinct acid. So in my ingredient sleuthing, I did find by a company called bio amber something called a bio based succinct acid for exfoliation now I'm not sure if this is the brand that Iuna uses but this sounds like this might be like a typical manufacturer for this ingredient but it is derived from non GMO plant sugar and it does not fall into the alpha hydroxy acid category. Now that's key because the P50 toner is using lactic, glycolic, and um, salicylic acid as their exfoliating agents. So that's a big key difference right there is they're using this different type of acid. So this particular company, like I said, I don't know that this is the particular one they're using, but I'm just gathering this as some information said that this type of acid could be used for exfoliation, that it was found to be non-irritating to the skin. So they go on to talk about the, you know, how effective is a succinct acid. And they um, did a study where they compared lactic acid, glycolic acid, and the succinct acid. And what they found was that gels containing bio-based succinct acid at higher pH 
decrease the surface scaliness of skin more effectively than the traditional alpha hydroxy acids. Now, why is that interesting? Because the lower pH that you make something, the more irritating it can potentially be to the skin. So to be able to use an acid that's as effective at 4.5 as maybe lactic acid is at 3.5, well then you're probably gonna have a lot more people be responding to the product and able to use it. So I'll link that below if you want to read it. So the next ingredient is lactobacillus ferment, um, probably acting as a preservative. They have this ingredient, could be an emollient, could be an emulsifier. They have sodium chloride. Um, then they have this nani fruit cell culture. Now this was another thing I found in my sleuthing that was quite fun. Um, I think I believe I found the company that makes their actives. They use this nani fruit cell culture. So supposedly this nani cell culture ingredient by this manufacturer blocks the microbiome communication signals to avoid the formation of biofilms and the development of virulence. Now what essentially they're saying is that this nani fruit cell culture gets onto the skin and is able to block these bacteria signals that can form these acne forming um, or you know negative uh, facial bacterias um, by not allowing them to create these biofilms. Now if you've ever woken up with like what feels like hair on your teeth, that's a biofilm. That's called dental caries. I got that question wrong in microbiology so I'll never forget that. But it's basically a bacteriostatic, meaning it's not allowing bacteria to form. Um, it's really actually quite interesting. So the next couple of things, I mean, we've talked about basically in that short amount of time, we've talked about the actives because then they have raspberry fruit extract, lactobacillus, coconut fruit. They do have gluconolactone in here, which is a polyhydroxy acid that could be contributing to exfoliation. It's very low on the ingredients list, so I'm not sure if that is there for another reason or if that is there as an exfoliator, but it is in there. Then there's sunflower seed oil, vitamin E, and the fragrance, and citric acid. So really quickly, that's just a rundown of that product. And so again, in my opinion, this is an interesting product. It's an exciting time in green beauty when we are seeing dupes come out for you know cult status conventional products. And um, I think Ayuna was really one of the brands to um, really get out there and be able to do it and to make a product that um, is um, potentially just as effective. Now. I haven't used it, I just got it like three days ago. So do am I able to speak to whether or not it is, as, it is effective at refining and resurfacing skin? Not yet, um, but I hope to weigh in on that soon. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next week, bye.